You're listening to the Podcast Detroit Network. Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information. We're live. <laughs> I said, hey, hey, welcome to the Man Cave Happy Hour. I said, hey, hey, welcome to the Man Cave Happy Hour. We're going to drink a fine whiskey and smoke a really fine cigar. It is time for happy hour. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here at Godfather Cigar and Martini Bar in Rochester. I'm Jamie Flanagan. My name is uh, Matt Fox. I'm Brian Donovan. And it is the Man Cave Happy Hour. We are ready to go here. Marty is here, the owner of the Godfather Cigar and Martini Bar. Marty, Welcome, thanks Marty. for having us in. Welcome, sir. Welcome. We're, uh, we're just uh, excited to be here, Podcast Detroit. Uh, we're remote, live, uh, on the scene at uh, The Godfather. Yeah, Podcast and Detroit, all right. Yeah, yeah. Those guys Detroit. are all right. Woo. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, we're just going to have some fun and uh, talk about one cigar and one craft cocktail. That's what we're going to do in the Man Cave Happy Hour each time we visit a different happy hour. We're going to grab one craft cocktail mixed up by the mixologist downstairs, and then one cigar, and uh, talk to some experts who actually know what they're talking about and can help us out. So, because I'm a novice, I don't really know. That's the whole point of this. It's like, I love a good cigar, but I just don't know cigars. Well, you know, Jamie, it's a lot like, uh, you know, I'm a wine guy. I yeah. like wine. I'm looking at the wine list here. I'm, I'm familiar with every single one, uh, all of his cabs. But I'm a wine, but I'm a cab guy, you see? So I think guys like to focus on things, and it's good to expand your horizons a little bit. You know, I've been starting to drink a little bit of whiskey here and there, and I think cigars for most guys is, is like golf. We've all done it, <laughs> you know, once or twice a year. You know, we never really get very good at it. Well, or I'm, so yeah. I'm so glad you said golf. Yeah, I'm so glad you said golf. No, I'm talking about the infrequent things that yes. most guys do. Right, right, right. right. Okay. So okay. I, I think a lot of a lot of guys could benefit from you know having a little bit of education. Education can't hurt, ah, Jamie. For now. <laughs> and uh, you know, cigars. Craft cocktails, you know, well, why not, right? So, yeah. each week we're gonna talk about a, a, a new cigar, right? And then, yeah, uh, absolutely. And, and, yeah, okay. love it. And, and Martin, so Matt Martin. led us here to The Godfather. Yes, I uh, I met Marty, what, a couple, uh, about two and a half years ago? Two and a half years ago, yeah. Yeah, I met Marty and uh, he's always been very friendly and welcoming to uh, patrons to his uh, establishment here, Godfather Cigar Martini Lounge. And uh, we have more folks coming in, so welcome, sir. Thanks for being here. But in, in all honesty, Marty, what, when I come here, I come here to relax. And I come here to be with friends, and I come here to just have a nice drink, have a cigar. But like Jamie, I'm a novice. I love to smoke a cigar. But what really works well when smoking a cigar and a craft cocktail at the same time? That's why they call us the last resort of the day. <laughs> 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 Don't be afraid to get right on the mic, Marty, too, yeah. when we're talking. It'll pick it up. It'll pick you up a, a little bit better. But um, perfect. But yeah, we, we like to have fun. some fun while while we're here, and uh, we have a few people joining us, and we're going to subject you. So, uh, Aaron, you're up first, man. We're going to play a game. We have some fun uh, along the way here, and we got a little game. Uh, Balderdash. We used to do a game called uh, the Game Show, and we would uh, play a little game. And uh, so what we do is we have a word. We'll each give you a definition. You have it right in front of you there. Um, we'll give you a definition, each of us, and uh, only one of them is a the correct definition. You gotta let us know what the right definition is. The word, your word is plonk. P-L-O-N-K, plonk. Plonk. Aaron, concentrate, plonk. Is plonk. the word, and uh, the definition? I, well, you know, we're at a cigar wine bar, right? So it's, it's a cheap wine. A plonk is a, a, a cheap wine. Okay, so we're gonna have give him several definitions. He's got to pick which yeah. one. Well, it's it's a, it's a cheap wine, is what it is. Is that what you think? That's well, that's well, yeah, Matt. <laughs> plonk, plonk. What's See, the definition? Uh, plonk, a a lively song, often accompanied with street dancing, <laughs> popular fr dur popular popular during French during the French Revolution. That's All what right. it means. That's that that is plonk. what plonk is. That's what plonk is. Yes. Or, or is it a characteristic sound associated with travelers' constipation? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Aaron. How do I know one of those definitions are going to show up? 
Plunk. P L O N K. P L O N K, Aaron. P L O N K, Plunk. Yeah. Is it a. I, I said it's a cheap, cheap or wine. inferior wine. Cheap. Crappy, crappy wine. Little yes. blue far. Is it wine, a French dance? Yeah. And, or a characteristic uh, sound associated okay, with take, travelers' uh, constipation? <laughs> okay. <laughs> plunk. You know it's much squishier than a plunk. There's a, that's way too solid for a traveler issue. Listen, you know it's, it's Aaron's. Oh. Aaron's. Uh, right. You know what? I'm going to go with the dance. It just sounds. Oh, you went with me? Uh, you're, so, you're such a nice guy for that, yes. <laughs> that's it, man. Game over, man. Game over. No, 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 no. Just Plunk is just a just cheap or inferior wine. It's a cheap it is. Wine. It is a it's cheap, cheap and inferior wine. It is a cheap and inferior wine. I'm only used Plunk. to cheap and inferior uh, women. No. Uh, <laughs> that is it. Otherwise known as not a plunk, but uh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> All right, so we got more people here, so we're going to mess with more people. What's, I, I, we met. What's your name again? Dave. All right, Dave's Dave. here. Dave, Dave, we have a, I have a word for you, Dave. Uh, it's SPOD. S-P-O-D. SPOD is the word. SPOD is the word. And it's, it's really unique because uh, Brian Donovan here, him and his friend, they're creating um, pods out of, uh, out of, they're using uh, shipping, containers. Shipping, containers. shipping containers. And they're making these different pods. There's like mobile bars. And it's unique. So a, a spod actually um, is is when you have several of the pods uh, together. Is a, a is a, a bunch of pods. yes, a bunch of pods. A spod is when they're all together. Is what that is. Or is a spod <laughs> <laughs> an unsuccessful attempt for an amphibian to try to impregnate <laughs> another amphibian? That's quite interesting. Wow, that's. Or, or, or is it the bottom leaves on tobacco plants? Spot. The bottom leaves on bottom tobacco leaves plants. Tobacco plant. Well, considering, I think Marty might know this answer, <laughs> but Matt, I think I'm going with you. All right, that's two for two. Who Matt Fox? Who believes Matt Fox? Everybody's <laughs> going with Matt Fox today. Everybody's going with you today. Yeah, apparently. Oh, I, uh, no, I grabbed the wrong thing. I, it's like, I'm like, no, I just look at me. I'm so mean. Oh, hold your calls, America. We have a winner. Oh, yeah. Hey, all right. So we'll buy you a drink, right? We'll have you put one of your drinks um, on our tab. And, so now uh, you know it's not an unsuccessful amphibian insemination. <laughs> you can now broaden your vocabulary with yeah, there you go. Yes. All right, so there you go. That's a little bit of fun. Uh, but we're at a, a cigar bar. We're here at Godfather's. And uh, ask, because we got a new location opening up, right? Yeah. yeah. 23 miles Shane, between Shaner and Hayes. It's right in Macomb uh, County, I guess, Shelby Township. That would be about 9,000 square feet, the largest in the state, top 10 in the country. Will be a steakhouse with amenity of cigars. Oh, it's two nice. stories. That's awesome. It's about three times, three times this size here we have. Uh, which should be uh, probably opening around uh, January or possibly February. Is it going to be more like a, like a big rock with the... With it's the, like a big rock, but yeah. it's going to be all smoking, upstairs, downstairs, outdoor. Uh, our patio is like 1,300 square feet patio. We're looking at 69 by 17 with two fire pits, garage doors. Uh, it's pretty big. Beautiful. Yeah, I saw your pictures that you posted online. That and was, yes, a couple of days ago we posted our sign to let everybody know that we finally have a landmark. Yeah. That is fantastic. Yeah. Congratulations on that. Thank that is going to be a wonderful Thank Now, Marty, how long have you been at this location? Uh, yeah. Seven and a half years, going on eight. Uh, is this your first like, cigar lounge? This was the first cigar okay. lounge, yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what gave you the inspiration? Uh, I, uh, you know what, I'm a cigar judge. I'm also a cigar yeah. panelist. Uh, I worked for Nat Sherman, a cigar company, as a regional manager for Michigan and Indiana. I write for the magazines. I compete also. Yeah. Uh, and blind tasting. Uh, I, I love cigars, especially when my first son was born, Brandon. He's 27 now. Uh, when Brandon was born, I bought a lot of cigars for friends and family and pass out like it's a boy. I pass out so many, I still have so many left. So friends will come over every night, we'll smoke more cigars, and, and since that day, just kind of got hooked on it. So, you, so you're a true aficionado then? Absolutely. So well, let's get on with it. Let's uh, grab the cigar and uh, and let's 
what do we do? <laughs> what are, and because what do you do with it when you get a cigar, right? I, that's, I'm always freaked out. That's another thing. So you have a Cut very, smoke it. You have yeah, a kind of lovely, you have a lovely, lovely wait staff here, and they're Thank so you. helpful, and and they seem very knowledgeable. And they walk up to the table, and I'm like, oh, well, I'm a guy. I should know what I'm doing, and <laughs> I don't. And she's like, how would you like that cut? And I'm like, I got no freaking idea. How many different cuts are there? Because there I, are, I've heard of a few of them, but how many? There are about to? nine, and uh, like a poke star. Uh, whistle, V cut, straight cut, English cut. Um, uh, you know, you got three different cuts as far as punch and also, the bris. You had you had me at poke. Yeah, yeah. Some, some cigars, <laughs> some cigars you cannot cut. You got to punch. Uh, some cigars you can do a V cut. Uh, some cigars you can only do straight cut. Like for example, the V uh, can only go on the round cap versus uh, torpedo. Uh, there, there are a lot of different cuts. Sometimes yeah. also it depends on what you like, what your preference is, what size of uh, ring gauge on the cigar. Not every cigar can be cut the way you want it. Some cigars, it has to be cut certain ways. Because a torpedo wrapped cigar is very pointy at very the end. Pointy, so yeah. a punch isn't really gonna, gonna, gonna work on that no, so no. well. In the Neither V-cut. If you have yeah. a V-cut, I mean, later the nicotine will block it because oh. it's such a small cut. Okay. I, yeah, as novice as I am, I actually asked somebody to punch the uh, torpedo cigar I had a couple weeks ago. It was actually pretty entertaining. That would Watching her here. try to punch a torpedo. It was really <laughs> the, the, the client's <laughs> always right. This if, idiot. If you ask my bartender, <laughs> if you ask my bartender to cut up uh, a, a punch on the V-cut, they will look at you like you're really serious. <laughs> <laughs> but again, you have a wonderful, kind, generous waitstaff that uh, puts up with his idiot shenanigans, so. <laughs> they're so all, they're all been actually trained on cutting and lighting the cigars. That's why we do not give you the cigar and light it while it's in your mouth. We kind of first heat up all the cold spots, yep. then we give it to you because once I give it to you and I light up with a lighter or a match, I count by say one to three un under the breath and it should be done, I walk away. Huh. Awesome, so what do we have on tap? What do, do we need to go grab them? Is she bringing them up to us? Uh, what's uh, what's on tap? What's the cigar we're gonna look at? Uh, and what are you smoking on right now? Right, right, now? Now, right now I'm smoking Rocky Patel, the decade. Uh, right. That is a um, Sumatra body, Sumatra flavor. It's aged five years uh, by Rocky Patel. Any cigar really takes about, sometimes about five years to make it. If it doesn't take that long, that is not a good cigar. Oh. Because by the time you, 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 you harvest, and by the time you let it ferment and age, and rotate every two weeks, you know, with a, a different uh, a humidity, different temperature, and, and trying to dry it out right, and, and moisturize it before you wrap it, it'll take about five years. You know, some people think making cigars, it can be overnight. Now, these people sit on the tobacco about five years wow, before okay. you have it in your, you know, cut the lid in your mouth. All right. So uh, what, what's, uh, what are we going to grab tonight and, and smoke? What are you going to walk us through and have us cut correctly? You know, people talk so about Cuban. I, I, you know, that's fine, but uh, I know Cuban has great cigars. I really have maybe five or six Cuban that I really like. Okay. You know, uh, uh, but today, Nicaraguans, Hondurans, Ecuadorian, Dominican has really achieved their cigars. You just also want you to know something. These all planted and harvest and rolled by Cuban. Okay. So where's the difference? Now, aren't those uh, called torcedores back in the day? Yeah. Torcedores were, uh, it was all passed down from generation on how to roll that uh, actual Cuban cigar. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I, I was kind of doing some research and I read that. I was like, that's very interesting. Well, Torcedor. Because mm -hmm. during the embargo, uh, the communism regime forced everybody to leave Cuba and started their own business outside Cuba. Got it. So got they it, chose it. Nicaragua, Hondurans, Caracas, Venezuela, the Ecuador, Dominican Republic, because all the adjacent islands not too far from Cuba. Soil, it's, you know, evenly the same. Uh, weather, water, it's all the same. Got it. Hey, uh, Marty, is the, the, the cigar industry, is it, is it growing? Is it a growing industry? Are people catching on? Is it something that kind of is static throughout the years? I have not seen it shrinking as much as the federal trying to fight it, but I've not seen it shrinking at all. It's, it's really growing, especially people start more um, uh, kind of realizing why smoke a cigarette. With all the nicotine and tar and all the chemicals, every cigarette has about 160 different chemicals. So you, I don't know if you're realizing how 160 chemicals are, are you inhaling and smoking huh. uh, versus a cigar. I'm not saying it's 100% healthy for you, but you are sure. not inhaling. Okay, right, right. And uh, so 160 um, chemicals versus what for a cigar? Yeah, you're looking at probably about 30 to 40. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, the cigar is oil-based. 
uh, I couldn't say natural, but it's an oil-based cigar. You're not inhaling. And um, you know what, when I first worked for Nat Sherman, uh, Mr. Sh uh, Mr. Uh, Jules Sherman asked me a question. He says, what's the difference between cigarette smokers and cigar smokers? And I kind of laughed and said, ah, they all huff and puff and smoke. <laughs> he said, no, it's not, you're wrong. I said, well, Mr. Sherman, please correct me. You know? And that was my interview day, and I was like, oh, you know, uh, shaking like a leaf on a tree. I thought I would flunk it. And um, he said, what do you do when somebody cuts you off while you're driving your car? You know, I go, uh, probably the first thing I'd give him a couple fingers, you know, followed by a couple colorful words, and, uh, you know, I'll grab my bag of cigarettes, smoke my cigarette, puff, 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 throw it out the window. He said, what do you do when you smoke cigars? I said to him, a newborn, uh, clean divorce, uh, <laughs> a, a nice partner, one a good stock, you know, uh, watching football with the boys, you know, whatever, and sit at the bar, you know, holding a longer conversation. He says, so it's kind of like a celebratory thing. And I go, yes, I guess the way you want to call it. He goes, that's the big difference. He says, this one you smoke it when you're under a lot of pressure. This, the other one you smoke it when you have time, when you're celebrating something. Right, got it. You know, anniversary or whatever. So. That's good. You know, the uh, same way, like I said, I'm, I'm a wine drinker. You know, wine is, a lot of people drink it to relax. It's, it, they appreciate it, they taste it. It's a, it's a uh, celebratory thing sometimes. As opposed to, uh, you know, in high school, you have the peppermint schnapps and a vent, oh, you know, yeah. a flask. It's <laughs> <laughs> kind of knocking Ouch. it back. <laughs> Brass monkey. Brass <laughs> monkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Little mad dog, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, Marty, let's grab some cigars. And while we do that, Brian, you see, you had a little setup to do, right? Because uh, yep. Brian loves to play uh, yeah. Battleship. So, uh, what is something else we did um, on the game show? was another game and we played uh, Battleship on the radio. It was brilliant, so we figured, Brian was like, can we play Battleship it's a, um, on the show? Time ever. On, on, it was a syndicated show. <laughs> it was the best best show ever. Best so show ever. Um, it's time to play Battleship. But here's the deal, we'll, we'll buy you a drink if you can sink a boat. Um, so, what, Brian, how does, uh, <laughs> you had one job, <laughs> one, one job. I'm trying. I set up all these microphones, the speakers, you wanted Battleship, I brought Battleship, and you come in, I'm like, Brian, you got a little setup to do here, set up the Battleship. Okay, listen, listen, listen. What are you doing right now? Okay, well, I'm setting up my Battleship. <laughs> setting up the Battleship. One job. Okay, I have five ships. That was it. All right, so, ships. explain I it to uh, everybody here so we can uh, we can have everybody uh, a few people take a take a shot at uh, at battleship well it's the old-fashioned battleship you know you have a grid okay one through ten and then a through j so you know uh, a one or you know b seven okay these are coordinates a through j one and through my, ten if my if one of my ships happened to be you know uh, on that coordinate you get a hit all right i have a uh, i'm looking at an aircraft carrier here that takes five hits to right, right. that Aircraft carrier. Okay. I have a destroyer. It takes three. All right. So yeah. I so mean, what we're gonna do is uh, you can give a coordinate. If you get a hit, you can keep going until you get a miss. Uh, if you sink one of the ships, then uh, we're gonna buy you a drink. And, Listen, uh, no, I'll buy someone a drink if they get two hits. <laughs> two hits in one turn. <laughs> All right. So we have some of our, our friends here from uh, Podcast Detroit. Bob and Dave are both here. They're both from IT and the D. Uh, just a, a, an amazing show. And uh, just a couple of amazing fellas. They've, uh, yeah, they are. yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. What you guys are doing for uh, podcasters in the, in the city and people who want to have a voice. Because uh, I teach high school journalism, and that's the whole thing about uh, the, the mission that I'm on, is to give these young people a voice. Uh, but a lot of times people graduate and they go on and they're done with college, because you can express yourself in college, but after that, your life's over. And uh, you really can't express yourself. And it's really cool that you guys give people a forum where they can express themselves. It's, uh, it's a continuing thing, and I, I, from my aspect, I really appreciate it uh, and what you guys do, and it, it's really, it's, I think it's pretty cool. So, Bob, you're, Bob, you're up first. Um, so, do you want to give a shot at uh, a Battleship, A through J, 1 through 10, right? So, so Bob, do you, do you understand the premise of Battleship? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you played as a kid, right? Of course. Sink my Battleship, B6. Brother. B6. B6. Uh, He's got to put his glasses oh on to B check. Where are we at on B6? B6 is a miss. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> all right, B6 is a miss. Uh, Dave's here as well. Dave's pushing all, all the buttons um, and keeping us on, going on the podcast. Detroit, he's got it going live. 
Uh, 36D. Wait, no. Uh, <laughs> Dave, Dave, that's not the right show, Dave. D4. What's that? D4. 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 It's a hit! Oh, it's a hit! All right, so one hit. Get up, get up All right. One. I'll buy you a drink if you get two. All you right, two so hits. D4, so now so you got So it could be sitting this way, it could be sitting a horizontal. Go D3. D3 is a hit. Oh. D3, it's a hit. Okay, now you can choose to take your free drink now. <laughs> <laughs> or try again. It's uh, you. Let's go D5. D5 is a hit. D5 oh, is a hit. Man, you're on a He's roll. He's on a roll. <laughs> Can he, is he seeing it in the window? Is that what's it? <laughs> no, just always rely on D. So that's uh, uh, so okay. There's so you can go either way. It's not. It's, you haven't sunk it yet. D6. You sunk my battle. Seriously, oh. he sunk right on. <laughs> there it is. Here's your commemorative <laughs> battleship, Dave. <laughs> you got it. Nice catch. Right on. There you go. Hey. All right. Okay. Excellent. So uh, I'm gonna yeah. buy him ten that's... shots and an Uber ride home. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of the, the the game show that we used to do. I just, I just that's I very know. rare for someone to get it in one yeah. in one go. One is, go. Is, is D? Are you like a pro at this? Is D like a a, a, a sure bet? Uh, no, it, it's it's yeah, I'm just a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> so because one of there is a. Probability. On the podcast Detroit Network, there's uh, there is a, a gaming show. Several. And uh, where yeah, but they play literally they, they play board they play board games on the air or something. What, what is that one? So you've got the loaded die that does board games, and then you've got uh, 3DMs that plays D and D. Okay. So they play D and D live on the on the podcast. All right, that's cool. Wow. So the 3DMs is a new one. Yep. And uh, the gaming one's been around, and they do like live events around. They just yep. uh, they don't necessarily broadcast live, but they go out and they play games at bars, and so they drink it up. So there's some cool stuff on the on the podcast Detroit Network. But we're here, Man Cave Happy Hour, and uh, time for a cigar, right? To break this down. And uh, what do we? So what do we got going? What do we have for us, Marty? We're smoking the Rocky Patel Decade. The decade. So that's what you were smoking on earlier, yes. correct? Yeah. All right. We're smoking the uh, Robusto. I'm going to do a okay. V cut on this one. Uh, who wants the V cut? Uh, I, the V cut works for me. I usually do that. So when, it, when, it, when it works with the cigar, I'll, we're watching him cutting. He's doing a V cut. Okay. So basically, he cuts it as a V. Okay. Yeah. And we're going to light it up. Nice. <laughs> All right, Jamie, you want to take that one, right? Uh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Let me heat up the cold spots for you. And so while you're doing that, uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna try out the the Rocky Patel decade, right? Decades. So back in the day, I was uh, doing other research, and I was reading that Church, uh, Winston Churchill. He was a big cigar That's smoker. A big cigar smoker. He fell in love with cigars way back when he was visiting Cuba oh. back in the day. That's when he really became a aficionado of cigars himself. Yeah. So aside from the Rocky Patels. Would you consider a Churchill a good cigar? Absolutely, Winston Churchill has a good cigar. Now, also, Churchill is the size of a cigar. Okay. Is that actual the, the that, gauge of it, or just the length? Uh, usually, Churchill's cigar is about 55 ring gauge and about seven inches long. Okay. Nice. So, as, as I would be a, a Churchill, <laughs> Jamie would be a, a, a Vienna. <laughs> So I'm gonna cut a straight cut. I don't, I don't think like a straight cut. Yeah, let's I'll do a straight cut. Okay. You do a straight cut? Yeah. So basically we cut the cap off of it. All right. Okay, so this cigar, Marty, you have an option, and, and one's not better than the other, it's just a personal preference? It's a personal preference. Okay. Yes. So what you're doing right now, you're actually lighting the cigar. I'm lighting the cigar, heat up the cold spot, so when I give it to you, I'm only gonna count one to three under my breath, and it should be done, and you're good. There you go. Now for wow, you, nice, we're nice. going to do a punch. A punch? Yeah. Okay. So what I'm trying to show you here, the same cigar, we can do different cuts on it. So what the side that you're lighting, that you're heating it up, that, that's called the foot. Is that correct? That's the foot. That's the foot that and you light. you got uh -huh. the center, which is the stomach, and this is the head, where all the flavor kind of right in the, in the center, because cigars usually cut at the bottom, and the cap is sealed off. So as the humidity, it goes in, into the cigar and travels, it gets stuck in the middle. That's when it starts getting, building up the flavor. Gotcha. All right. So how, how long can you hold a cigar in a humidor? Uh, does it get better? Does it get to cigar, just kind of stabilize it? What does it do? Cigars like wine, as long as you keep the right temperature, right humidity. It will get better? It will get better as it ages. Oh. It's not like, for example, 
when you take liquor out of the barrel and you put it in a bottle, it doesn't age. It's the, the clock stops ticking. With cigars, it's different. As you hold on to it, like I said, right temperature, right humidity will age. Nice. That's very smooth. I actually, I actually enjoy that. It is. It's a very smooth cigar. I like that. So the the outside of the you know, the cigar, the wrapper, that that's co considered the wrapper. So that's where most of the flavors come. That's from. where most of the flavors, like 75% of the flavors, out of the wrapper. You know, the binder and filler you've got inside of it, what makes the structure of the cigar, and you got the wrapper, which is 70% of the, the flavor. And the tobacco that's inside, that's mostly dried and fermented tobacco? Is yes, they all they all go through through the same process, but the wrapper usually they use, which is a cleaner wrapper where it has no cuts, no burns, no holes in it, no scars. Anything with, with the scars, that would be the binder, uh, anything with cuts as a leaf, when it has scars on it, that would be the filler. Gotcha. So those, they cannot use them, use them as a cosmetic wrapper because it's got scars on it and rashes. Nice, I like it. It's very smooth, really enjoy it. So if I was, uh, since I'm enjoying this wonderful cigar, what would be a, a proper uh, drink to, uh, or a cocktail to have? With this cigar, it goes great with Cabernet or uh, a Johnny Walker Black Scotch, go, single awesome. malt. Okay, so I have a cab here, let's see how this works. Yeah. Yeah, Brian's, uh, Brian's got a cab and he's got the uh, Rocky Patel Decade, so he's got a nice little mix happening over there. I'm, I'm very much at peace right now, so yeah. <laughs> there you go. So what, what else can you tell us about uh, the Rocky Patel brand and uh, their history and... Uh... You know, Rocky Patel, uh, I, you know, uh, came up in the market as in, since 1997 when he first uh, joined and will partner with the Indian Tobacco. At 2001, he branched off, came up with his own brand and called it the RP, Rocky Patel, that's his name. Uh, it's funny, uh, Rocky, when he first started, there was an article in the Cigar Fashionado. Uh When I did a party for Rocky, I kind of put the article on his cake. I made a cake for him. <laughs> and it says, that it, uh, in the article, it says, 15 years ago, they said you never make it. 10 years ago, they said you never last. Five years ago, they start paying attention. Today, we're right where we belong, in your hands. That's very nice. Cool. nice. That's nice. very yeah. nice. So how many, how many different cigars are there in the uh, yeah, Rocky, Rocky Patel? Patel. Yeah. There are probably at least about stable. 20 different cigars, wow. at least 20 to 25. Rocky has, for example, the Edge, He's got the older flavor like Sumatra, Habano, Connecticut, uh, the Light, the Maduro, uh, you know, the Carollo, Candela. He also, same thing, has on the 1999 Vintage, the 1992, 1990, uh, uh, the 15th, uh, the 75th anniversary, 2006. Uh, he's got several and uh, also has a new roller who's rolling cigars for him now, which is Hamlet Prodas. Uh, and, and it's a kind of old school rapper, um, hmm. uh, one of the top cigar rollers as well. Oh. So decade, this is the decade, the tenth anniversary, yes. and uh, so what? Uh, so is this going to be a limited thing? Will you you not be able to get these after a little while? No, Rocky continues to uh, do the decades. That's one of his favorite brand, which okay. is rated rated ninety two in cigar aficionado. That's a good number. And uh, for so far, for about five years, it's rated 92 in the Cigar Fashionado that decade. And Rocky not only used Honduran or Nicaraguan tobacco, but he used Ecuadorian, Brazilian, uh, Caracas, Venezuela, Dominican. Rocky's very open as far as tobacco. Uh, okay. You know, he's got farms. He also purchased outside his farms other tobacco from different uh, uh, regions. And he blends uh, his own blends. Okay, so what I understand about uh, whiskey blends is that uh, the whiskey will change. Uh, the base whiskeys, like your Johnny Walker, will change over the years, uh, yes. depending on what sources they're getting. But their goal is to have the same tasting Johnny Walker Black as, as the end product. Um, is, does that hold true for, for cigars? Am I going to smoke a, a decade like... A, a year from now, two years from now, and, and get the same taste? It, it shouldn't be different. If you, as long as you're using the right uh, tobacco, the right blend should be the same. Um, Rocky has um, his team, and especially when you, when you have cigar rollers, they work a team of two. One that does the binding and the filling, one does the, the wrapping, 
and they go through a quality, quality control, and when they go through, uh, not every decade looks the same. If it's a little bit lighter wrapper, that will put aside. It's called, uh, either you call it a reject, or you just put it on the side for other tobacco, other, other flavor. All right. Hmm. So basically they're using uh, a uh, Lajero, uh, Super Lajero uh, wrapper on that cigar, which is the very top, the sun-grown Lajero, because you have three different uh, stages in a tobacco plant. You have the Lajero, you have the Cinco, and you have the Seco. All right. Yeah. The, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Marty, you know, uh, we started the show, you're talking about the uh, grow pods, that, uh, the, a new business that I've, I'm affiliated with, uh, everything from cannabis to tomatoes to mushrooms to everything. Is this something that can be grown inside? Uh, I mean, what, what, are the, what are the characteristics of the, the perfect grow area for tobacco? You need a lot of sun, sun and water yeah. and a good soil. Like pot. Like pot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Do you except, know of any except, operations that are grown indoors? They can grow them everywhere these <laughs> days. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, do, you, do you know of operations that grow inside? No. No? Nobody grows inside. I mean, the inside. plants are large. Tobacco the, the, plants are large. The leaves the are only, very large. The only time you bring that tobacco inside when you harvest it and you let it dry, when you hang it down the rafters in the barns because you want to release all the moisture out of it. That's the only time you bring it inside the barns. Um, is there a perfect latitude? Like, uh, I'm thinking of, of wine grapes. Is there a perfect latitude or, or uh, type of terrain that's ideal for tobacco growth? Well, tobacco gets rotated and moved around from area to area. You know, you've got so much heat, and that's why they rotate it every two weeks. A lot of the times in the center of the pile, it gets really, really warm. So they, that's why they rotate them and, uh, you know, just kind of give it a different... Uh, a level of a, of a moisture and humidity. Right, right, okay. Very interesting. So where is the, where is the best tobacco grown? You got Caracas, Venezuela. You got Ecuador. You got Nicaragua, Dominican. Um, I mean, it's great tobacco. Uh, so far, I know we have the embargo with the um, Cuba. Right. But we've been smoking good cigars, and it's not Cubans. Right. And, and, but what about Venezuela? Is it, is Venezuela it still? Venezuela has a good cigars also. But, uh, I mean, uh, but now with their, their current conditions and their economy and stuff, is it, it, the production gone down? Is it uh, created a premium on that? Venezuela doesn't have a lot. It has, you know, yes, it has a little bit, but it's not like Nicaragua and Dominican, Caracas, Venezuela, the Ecuador. They're very active, and, and, and that's where majority of the cigar rollers are. So when you see everybody kind of piles up in the same area, that's where, you know. So you said Ecuador is one of the? Yes. Now you got in Nicaragua, for example, uh, we have two areas where it grow the most tobacco because you got the mountains on one side and you got uh, uh, the other side. You have a lot of water, the soil nice and wet and moist. So you've got uh, areas called Esteli and Jalapas. Hmm. That's where the majority of the tobacco today, you know, they plant them and that's where we're smoking, from the area of Jalapa and Esteli. Now, you had mentioned the embargo just a few moments ago. The cigars that are out there that were pre-embargo, the tobacco? The embargo was lifted only for your own consumption, not for retail for us. Okay. We cannot retail it. But there are cigars out there that are pre-embargo tobacco. How expensive would those cigars be? Um, we're, we're, when you say how expensive, and now we're definitely going Constant. back to, let's say, Cubans. Right. Cubans is not, not going to budge on the price. It's always going to be about <laughs> twice as much, if not three times, the Nicaraguans. And they're not, just because now the, the people think the market's open, like I said, but it's all for young consumption, but they're not right. budging on the price. They're actually, prices are going higher, even on the Nicaraguan and Dominican and Ecuadorian, because federal has been pushing a lot of r rules and regulations on them. So the tobacco is, every six months to a year, we see... Uh, prices are gone up every year. All right. So no Matt, matter. I yeah. think Matt has, as yeah. as a, as an aficionado and a and a pro, and a I think Matt is. Yeah. Uh, he has some questions. He was going to try to stump the chump here. Okay. Um, I think Matt. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. To give these, you a little quiz. These questions are from Marty. Yeah. 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 I got they're, some they're, questions they're, for Marty. There are there there are ten questions. We're only going to do a couple of them there for you. Uh, being a tobacconist, being an aficionado as you are. I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. Give me the ahead. answers, and sure. we're going to find out if you got them right or not. Okay. How's that sound? That's fine. All right. So well, he's got he's got a lot of confidence here. Yes, he does. Yes, I see that. So, which is the darkest color of a cigar? What's the darkest color cigar wrapper? Is it a Colorado, a Maduro, Oscuro, or a Claro? 
Maduro. Maduro. Let's see. He probably didn't he even does. have to give him the multiple choice. You could probably yes. just tell him. Let's see. We're going to answer more than one. So we got that. You said Maduro, Maduro for number one. All right. So number two, we're going to go with what is the name of the tobacco grown in the United States that is most often used for high quality cigar wrappers? Is it the Tampa, the Cuban Seed, the Colorado Red, or the Connecticut Shade? Connecticut Shade. Connecticut Shade. All right. He's uh, not see, even hesitating no, with these not, answers. Is he? <laughs> no, he's he? no. not even blinking at these. All right. So as a PSA, what is the finding? What is the, what is the finding of the Surgeon General of the United States concerning cigars? Our cigars are not safe for alternative to cigarettes. Cigars are safe alternatives to cigarettes. Cigars are safe as long as you do not inhale, or cigars are unsafe because secondhand smoke is safe. Cigars, uh, it's as long as you don't inhale. As long as you don't inhale. Okay, wonderful. All right, last question. Cigars are categorized by their length and what other measurement? The balance point, weight, ring size, or circumference? Ring size. Ring size. All right. Let's see what we get here. It won't let me answer them all. Okay, we're just going to teach that one, that one, that one. I think you did well. Yeah. I so, think yeah. he did very well. What do you guys think? You guys think you did pretty well? Oh, yeah. I, I, think he's, I think he's on it. All right. Hat trick. You said the Connecticut shade. Yeah. Correct. And then you said Maduro. You got to answer. You, you left one blank up there. Did I really? You did. All right. There you go. There we go. All right. Her, yes. There we are. All right. So the first one was the Maduro, you said? Yes. It's the Oscuro, actually. Oh. It's the darkest shade of a uh, wrapper, the Oscuro. Well, no, because, see, there's also Super Lujero Maduro. All right. That's a strong Super Lujero because it's such see, a strong that's why cigar. You, that's why you're aficionado. I'm kind of thinking uh, I Marty it. doesn't know shit about cigars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you beat the internet, my friend. I did. So your other question was the Connecticut shade. Yeah. That was the correct answer. Yes. Connecticut, to Connecticut, Connecticut tobacco is grown under large tents, which protect Ooh. the leaves from direct sunlight huh. and produce a superior mild to medium body tasting wrapper. That's why you use a cheesecloth to keep the sun uh, uh, away from it. Correct. And the other one that you answered was ring size, right? Yes. Yes. Ring size is measured. That's the correct answer. It's in 60 fourths of an inch and represents the diameter of the cigar itself. Absolutely. A cigar is 50 to 60 fourths of an inch in diameter and seven inches long would be classified as a Churchill, for example, as you pointed Absolutely. out. Absolutely. So well done, Marty. Well, well done. Yeah, he knows... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is it. All right, so Marty, we've been smoking uh, these uh, Rocky Patels for a little bit, the decade. And uh, what, what, should, what kind of flavors are, should we be tasting in, in the cigar? And, and what should, as, you're as getting, you do, you're should getting, you be tasting? I, you know, what? You're getting kind of a more nutty, earthy, you know, complex cigar. That's what you're getting. Uh, Rocky Patel, like I said, uses different blend. And those are aged for five years to get the right flavor out of it. And uh, before they get wrapped and rolled, they take them through a bath and moisturize the wrapper also. So to give it a nice flavor to it. Um, you know, when you speak of Maduro, uh, there is two way of Maduro. There is a, 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 it's people when they see a Maduro kind of walk away from because they think it's harsh, it's strong, it's a full body cigar. Well, you Aaron's kind of harsh and strong, but you know, you know, yeah. we deal with him. So. I am gonna, <laughs> I am gonna go outside the box of Rocky and speak of Ashton. Okay. Ashton has a yeah. cigar. It's called Age Maduro. Behind you, there is a uh, a poster. See that a cigar dark, is dark, dark, dark. right? Yeah. And that's it. Says not say Maduro. It says Age Maduro on the bottom. And then see the chocolate behind it, yeah. the chocolate balls? That tells you how sweet that cigar is, huh. how oily and sweet and mild. As a matter of fact, in a, in a category of, of Ashton, this will be as medium. And the Connecticut wrapper, which is the classic, will be a mild, which is light. And you got the VSG cigar is the Maduro full body of the Ashton. So that cigar, even as dark, is Maduro, but it's aged Maduro. So okay. it's not harsh. It's medium body. All right. Nice. So here's the other question I have for you is uh, you're smoking. I'm smoking this. I, I haven't ashed it. It's a good, uh, oh, I don't know. What's it? We're in an inch and a half here. It's, uh, it, it, are you supposed to keep the ash attached to the cigar as long as possible? <laughs> do you do the George Burns and you 
jam a piano wire up in there to make sure it didn't fall off. Uh, what's what's the importance? The, the best of way the to ash. smoke it. The best way to smoke it. Keep the ash on it to see how well this has been. You know, the structure wise. I'm kind of. I, mean, I got a little bit of a bend here. I got. A, <laughs> see, the cigar, Brian, the cigar. It's oh. okay, but, but see, when you ash your cigar, as you take a draw, you go directly to the hot, and your cigar will tend to burn uneven. We call it canoeing or boating. But if you keep the ashes on it as you take a draw, your, your draw will become nice and cool draw because it's going through the ashes before it hits the hot. Now, I know a lot of people kind of squeeze the cigars, trying to see how fresh that is. Sure. They think they're in a fruit market. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that's, not, that's not how it works? Yeah, that's not how it works. I tell people, do not that's squeeze not it. It's, not, it's not Charmin, you know? No. <laughs> so, you know, you've got to keep your ash on it. Or people sometimes touch the body. When you touch the body, our body produces oil. When you touch it with your fingers, you're actually applying the oil to the wrapper. What's going to happen? One side is going to burn more than the other. Now, I know I notice some people, when they have a cigar canoe on them, they keep lighting the other side and trying to even it up. Yeah. Well, that's not the way to do it. When you light it, you have to blow forward. You see a fire. You're letting, you, because now, actually now you're letting the monoxide out of it. Wait, wait a minute. You, you, you blow forward when you light it? You blow forward, so let the fire start because... You actually get you're letting you're releasing the monoxide out of the cigar hey, because hey, if it gets wrapped inside of it, it's gonna canoe, it's gonna burn. I, did, I didn't know that. Thank you, Marty. Yeah, you welcome. Hey, hey, Cynthia, Cynthia. So Cynthia, Cynthia, up here. Cynthia. These two here are, are on our tab, and I, I do have to introduce these folks here, Jamie. Oh okay, yeah, yeah please do. Um, <laughs> this is a uh, the local couple here, uh, Kevin and Lori Zaluski. Yeah, Kevin, we the, were at the they, party. Hey, hey guys, Hi, how Kevin. are you? They uh, they own a company that was recently uh, profiled by the COO of of Facebook oh. mentioned this company in Rochester, Shut up. Michigan. It's called Love Book. Cynthia, don't go away. And they're just uh, amazing people. Yeah. I, I've, Kevin and Lori, look at them. They're, they're beautiful people. They are gorgeous. I've had sex with his wife so many times <laughs> I can't even <laughs> tell you. <laughs> and she's amazing. Oi. Oi. All right, so I Marty, don't be shy, that. Lori. You are amazing. You are that amazing. Is, that is amazing. <laughs> um, so, and so is Aaron. Aaron, don't be bashful. <laughs> Mark, we uh, we we're, happy, we're 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 diving into these Rocky Patels here. What would you pair with this? Because we're going to send Cynthia to grab uh, a couple, uh, if you would be so kind. Uh, so what what should we? What would you pair with uh, the the with decade one, here from Rocky Patel? With that Patel? one, like I said earlier, you can. It's good with Cabernet, nice yeah. Napa Cap, or. Scotch, single malt scotch. All right. Yeah. So, uh, a John, what skin, single malt scotch uh, should we call up here? You had mentioned uh, what Johnny Walker Black. Johnny Walker so Black. Yeah. Cynthia. Johnny Walker Black. We need yep. two Rocky Patel decades for these people here. And then, uh, so I'll try it with the Johnny Walker Black. I'll we'll and go with either that. a cab or a Johnny Walker for these guys. Where and then, um, Matt, are you going to go with the? I'll go with the cab. I'll try the cab. All right. I'm going to so join I'll Brian on that. Just uh, so it, when I'm doing the Johnny Walker with uh, with a cigar, does it matter if it's on the rocks or if it's uh, sometimes, neat? Or? Sometimes people say put one cube just to open it up a little bit. Okay. I normally drink it neat, no okay. rocks at all. All right. Water it down for me. No, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but uh, just one ice cube, if you would, um, on the on the Johnny Walker Black, if you would. One. One. All right. One cap. Brian, do you need another one? You good? No, and then, and then what these guys want here. All right. Put it on Brian's tab. Yes. It's on my tab. Oh, we got a request for a cut. Oh, oh rock on. Now, this is a torpedo this he's got here. This is a torpedo that, uh, pointy. That's that Dave torpedo. has here. That's is that do another punch? Cut. Don't do punch, punch it. Punch no, it. No, no, is that no, another no. Rocky there you got? No punch. What is, what is that? What are you cutting up there, Marty? I'm cutting straight, which is a torpedo of the Rocky Patel. Okay. Nice. Case. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, so why why did you why did you pick why oh that's a decade that's another decade. It's a decade, decade torpedo. Yeah. So it's uh, so what's the difference? He's got so we're all smoking the Rocky Patel decade, although that one is rolled like a torpedo. You said it was the what? A torpedo is, is just a, a matter of uh, yeah, style. Yeah. But it's still a decade though. So a they decade. the decade it was the well, you said it was the Torino. Uh, torpedo. 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 Okay. Yeah, which is the other name is Balacoso. If it was shorter, it would be a Balacoso. Torpedo is a longer cigars. Now Rocky has a on the same decade cigar. He's got a robusto, okay, Toro, and torpedo. Or is there a different? So why? <laughs> why are there five different wrap roll? Are, there, are the wrappers different, or is it just a different roll? It's, it's the same wrapper, but some people, let's say, don't have much time to smoke a bigger okay. cigar. 
they have an hour to, to smoke. They go for Robusto. If you have a little bit longer time, they go for a, a, a Toro. They, uh, and there's, he also makes it in Tubo, which is the tube. Uh, Rocky Patel comes in the tube as well. So this, the flavor should be the same Flavor is the same. The draw it's might be a little bit different. It okay. depends on the diameter of the cigar. This is getting more complicated by the minute. I know. That's <laughs> what I said. That's why we're doing this, because I got no blood. This is not getting easier. <laughs> we were supposed to make You're this supposed easy to clear for everybody. This up, right? What are you doing? It's now, you notice these are all box press. They're not round. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's what I was like. This is like squarish. Yeah. Yes. Because when they make them, they make them round. Then they have a, a little die. They put between every cigar... A stick. All these sticks are the same height, same length between every cigar. And you just press them down and put weight on them, press them for 45 days, then they release them later. They, be, they, they hold that mold, which is box press. That's what we call Bo Boxed press. So All they right. box press it for 45 days and then release it to the public. Yes. So well, they before they go to public, they go into in their facility, the storage, and let them breathe in their uh, facilities and the cedar rooms before they get wrapped and shipped. Wow. When we smoke them here, there's a you lot know, more to cigars than I ever thought possible. I, I I was amazed when he said a good cigar it takes five years. Five years. Five years. And, and I, I thought they did. It in the, yeah. I thought Are they had like a bunch of like an assembly line full of virgins rolling them on their thighs. <laughs> uh, we all say that, but it's not that way. No, it's not that way. Not that way. No. It's, it's, it's virgin <laughs> guys, isn't it? <laughs> it's on it's a bench. Not, Don't worry, it's a bench. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So this ash is just rolling. For Let's me. go just, someplace else. That. I thought this was a bunch of virgin thing, you know, kind of a, you know. <laughs> I'm, do, I'm done with the cigar well, thing. They, now. they tell you that so you can smoke more cigars. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a 99 times out of 10. That's not even a number, but uh, I drink Guinness. <laughs> 99 times out of 10? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll drink. You're a school teacher. Yes. I'll drink Guinness. <laughs> He's got but all. you're not a math teacher, are no, you? No, definitely not. Definitely not a math teacher. Journalism, yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, uh, so, but I'm a Guinness drinker, uh, religiously. And uh, what's a good cigar to go with a, a, a nice, perfect pint of, of Guinness? Guinness, you want to do the uh, Habano uh, with the Guinness or the Carollos, because hmm. it releases such a nice flavor. And that's the, the wrapper, and, the Habano and, and the wrapper. wrapper? Yes, and it goes great with the stout. Okay. With Guinness. Yeah, I'm a All big right. Jameson guy. I, I love my Jameson. So, hey, <laughs> quiet over there. Yeah. Peanut I gallery remember, needs to be quiet over there. I remember there. just about a year ago around Yeah, don't, let's not talk about that. Yeah, Marty, I, Marty remembers I remember those. that. Yeah, yes. yeah. I, 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 I've already <laughs> apologized profusely for uh, that incident. So, <laughs> well, so it <laughs> didn't end well for Matthew. Yeah. Didn't. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Matt, I, I want to hear about this because yeah, gonna, you know you ever you ever make, see somebody and you think make, make should I say trouble. hi to them or should I apologize? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my life. When Sorry. I had to come back two weeks later and apologize to Marty for what happened that night, yeah, oh, wow. that, it was not pretty. It was not pretty at all. But no. I I, may, I love my Jameson. Yeah, yeah, I what can see pair, that. Yeah, you're right. But what does pair well with <laughs> what does pair well with uh, Jameson? With Jameson, um, you know, Jameson, you can go with pretty much everything. What uh, pairs well with a mugshot. <laughs> oh, God. Mugshot. Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> Tell him about that. Aaron, I think Aaron has the answer. There you go. Uh, there you are. <laughs> do we want to go again? We want to. Do we? Well, we're waiting for our drink to, to roll up here. And wow. uh, now you see, as you smoke the cigar, when it gets down to the center, yeah, it releases yeah. such a nice flavor. It really is. Uh, it's yeah. getting more full, more robust more, as, yes. uh, as the uh, cigar goes on. Hey, Andy, how you doing, man? Thanks for joining us. Yeah. <laughs> Cynthia will be up in just a second. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Aaron, Aaron had a question because um, he's got a, a really long ash going, and he's just been uh, huffing and puffing on the cigar. Hey, Aaron, nice ash. <laughs> nice ash. Thank you. <laughs> nice I'm ash. Glad yourself, sir. Uh, no, as I get towards the end, how far down should one smoke a cigar before you call it? No mas and go get another How far one. do you want to go? <laughs> <laughs> Should we leave? I'm, I'm not mad. Should we I'm leave? I'm not going to go all the way. But, uh. You know, it's funny. Uh, one day I was smoking uh, a, uh, it was the uh, uh, Pedron cigar. And I really liked that cigar. I didn't want to let go of it. And it got way past the label. So I took the band off. And I kept on smoking it. It would start burning my fingers. So I took a toothpick. <laughs> and I put it right on there. So I hold it like a roach clip. And I call it. Poke it and smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> Poke it and smoke it. You can go as you far go. as you want. That is what it comes down to. <laughs> I didn't ash on your coat, did I? All right, no. So, so really, like all the way to the bottom. All the you way. Could, yeah, you could go all the way to the bottom. Yeah. All, right. all the way to the bottom, Lori. 
Yeah. All the way to the bottom. Oh. Oh, you know what that means. It's time for some more Battleship. Oh, my Battleship. Oh, yeah. <laughs> battleship. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we, so we had Dave do something that's very, very rare. Yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> he made it seem easy. He, uh, he sunk a battleship in one turn, which is unheard that's, of. That's unheard of, yes. All in right. the, in so the annals of battleship, it's unheard of, Dave. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, we've got to put these, yeah. gotta put these back so you, uh, you know, know what you're... No, that's Dave. That's Dave. Hey, guys, say hello to Jenny. Say hello to Jenny right there. What's up, Jen? Hi, Jen. Hey, Jen. A little hard cut desire. All right. All right. I, one of those Johnny Walkers was coming my way. <laughs> I think. Did you guys get a couple? Huh? Did you? You don't know? Yeah. You don't know? Okay. Maybe, maybe, but, uh, maybe so should do, maybe a, should a do Robusto. Battleship. Maybe you should do Robusto for them because, I, you know, that's a pretty big cigar. Okay. She said you said Tokyo. Oh, no, no. Uh, just uh, Robusto, if you don't mind. It's yeah. just right yeah. next to it. Thank you. Who got the uh, glasses right. of wine? Um, I did. Matt got a glass of wine. And I think one over there. What would you end up getting, Lori? All right, so I'm going to have Dave come up here. Or actually, I'm going to come to you, Dave. So we're going to play some Battleship. Yep. Brian, are you ready? We're going to play some Battleship. Dude, I was born ready. You kidding All me? right, here we go. Right. So what's it, A through G? No, it's uh, A through J. A through J, 1 through 10, and yes? One through, uh, 1 through 10, yes. All right, so Dave, sink his battle. Sink Brian's Battleship. Let's see what do you have. Um, I'm thinking he's got a pretty big battleship there. Uh, let's go with let's go with nine and what will be? Uh, let's go with K. K nine. It's A through There's J. There's no K. It's A through J, it's a brother. Through J. Were you not paying attention earlier? <laughs> See, I'm going with Come the on. S. K S forty two. You're on the soil. <laughs> left the ocean. It's like K K nine. What? No. <laughs> Is that because Brian's an animal behaviorist? Is that why you went K9? That's is that why you did that? Is that why? Okay. You're what you teasing got? me now. You know what it is? I got the G and the J mixed up on so many words. So let's go G9. G9? G9. Uh, G9 is a hit. Ooh. We got a hit already? You guys are... Hey, did you... Do, are you watching my battleship game here? <laughs> did you peer behind my... So it's a hit is what you're saying. It's, it's, a, it's a hit. All right. It's so a hit. Can you do it from there? It's guys named Dave, yeah. You guys must have the... Uh, all right, so we're going to come over to your, uh, your, uh, your friends over here, Brian. I'll cut for them, don't Your name again? Kevin, how are you? Good. You, let's try already. to sink Brian's battleship. What do you Kevin, got? Kevin, so you know G9. So G9 more. is a hit. G9 was it a hit. It could be going this way. It could be going this way. There was already three before, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so put three. You, you understand a grid. I do. I get okay. It, yeah. So what do you got, Kevin? Well, um, I need to peer into his soul for a second. Um, I'm going to say that... Now, what, peer into his soul means I, I mean, need to remove my pants. Yeah, basically. <laughs> oh, my. I'm going to go with F9. F9, F9 is a miss. F9 oh, is you need a to miss. take a, les a lesson from Dave. Dave... Oh, you're a vertical kind of guy. He, yeah, well, he, ch <laughs> he, ch he channeled something, and he... And so, your, uh, your, your lovely bride here, what was your name again? So G9 is a hit. F9, F9 is, is a, a miss. What was your name again? Lori, my name is Matthew. It's a pleasure. So what do you got for us? Say G8. G8. G8 is a hit. G8 is a hit. Ah, oh, we're Lori, onto something. We Lori. are definitely onto something here. If you get this next one, uh -oh. I'm going to buy you a drink. Uh-oh. So, right. hold on. Lori. G8 and G9 are hits. Uh-oh. So it's either G10 or G7. Uh-oh. I'm going to say G10. Hey. Yes. Yes, it's a hit. That's you got it. Hit. You sunk it. Wow. You guys, uh, you guys are really good at this game. I was terrible at this game as a kid. <laughs> All right. So, Marty, I, uh, I was talking nice job, too Lord. much, and I let my cigar go out. So when I'm about halfway through, when I'm about halfway through, what does... Oh, uh, who uh, needs cell phones anyways? <laughs> yeah, who needs cell phones? What does one do um, with, uh, with the cigar? Do it, how do you relight it? Is there a particular way to relight? Nope. Just grab the lighter and do it. Okay. <laughs> all you, bro. <laughs> See, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be all proper uh, and, and do it right. Whoa, hey, there you go. All right. And then right. draw. Take a draw. Oh, thank you. You're good. 
Way to go. NBC's in. I'm back in action. All right, I was chit-chatting. That was expert-like over there, Jamie. That was, oh, we're good. That we're was. Good, yeah. I was chit-chatting uh, too, too much. So. <laughs> no, right. no worries. No worries. All right, Matt. I want to get rid of this phone anyways. All right. You Marty stand. just knocked a drink this over on my phone. This good. I like this. Yes, you can, uh, you can It's sit. just all these Tinder right, right so swipes. So who do we have? I'm sorry. What's your name again? I had a on the screen. I wanted you to wipe it down. All right. Andrew over here. Andrew. Andrew, Matt, go with, well, don't let him see, right? Yeah, I'm not going to um, let you see. <laughs> Andrew, we, we play another game. It's uh, We're going to give uh, three definitions to a word, and you got to decide which one of us is telling the truth. All right? So the word is dottle, D-O-T-T-L-E, dottle. Dottle. Uh, yep, dottle is, is the word, and it's, uh, it's not the taking your time. It's, 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 not, it's not that one. It's... Uh, it's <laughs> It's a big beat that's fed to cows, right? It's a big beat that is, is fed to cows. A dottle. A dottle. Yes. Or, or Andy, Andrew, is it... Uh, no, it's not. It's the beat. Are, are you sure? I'm sure. Are you positive? Positive. 100%. Well. Oh, okay. But 33%. I gotta, I, 33%? <laughs> 99 out of 10. Or is it, uh, Andrew, is it tobacco ash left in a pipe after it has been smoked? Or, 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 is a doddle, doddle, d o t t l e. Brian, what's what's the other? Uh, what's yeah. what, uh, what? What do you think a doddle is? It's a doddle, the residue left after a nefarious person has been playing with a doll. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. All right. Nefarious. My bad. That is. I don't know what you, I don't know where you got that from. <laughs> go with the, um, the middle option. The middle option? Yeah. Is that the second option? Yes. Second. All right, the second option. So the tobacco ash left in a pipe after it has been smoked. That is what a doddle is. That is what it is. You are, sir. Congratulations. Congratulations. You are correct. Well done. Well done. So we've got cigars to light up. <laughs> would anyone else like to uh, partake in a cigar? <laughs> All right, yeah. So if you need to get it cut, you can come on up. Or, yeah, Mar Marty will help you out. He'll cut you. He'll light you. Um, you want a cigar? It's like the, Come it's on. like on the streets. He'll cut you, he'll light you. <laughs> cut you and light you. <laughs> Something like that. What do you prefer? V cut or straight cut? V cut. Wow. Okay. And with that, holy smokes, we're having like way too we'll much do fun. Do a punch for you. That's what I. Yeah. He's doing up a, a punch there. Uh, That's very right. nice. Let's see. Take a drop. And with that, it's uh, it's been an hour, and uh, that's the the man cave happy hour. There you go. We're gonna hang out, uh, Godfather Cigar and uh, Martini Bar in Rochester. It's like right at Tinkin, just north of Tinkin in the big shopping plaza there. Yep. There's a, a new one opening up. Where's the the new one at? The 23 Mile and Shelby Township between uh, Shaner and Hayes on 23 Mile. So Excellent. you're looking uh, February for sure, hopefully, barring any construction snafus uh, yes. in the in the new year. Uh, the Godfather, it's also just The Godfather, right? It's, and no, uh, it's called Godfather Bistro Cigar Bar because Godfather. it's got a full kitchen. And Marty, yeah. thank you very much. You're a wonderful host. Thank, oh my thank, God. thank you, you so much, much for the education. For you, yeah, this is... Uh, I learned a lot today. Yeah, we had a, a great I learned time. a lot about Aaron that I don't really want to repeat. <laughs> but <laughs> All right, so. Thanks for uh, you, everybody, for coming out and uh, taking part in the Man Cave Happy Hour. And uh, we appreciate you being here. And uh, let's uh, finish these cigars and have some fun. Excellent. Right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. What?